Tomo News presents Living on Alien Planets. NASA finds star system with seven Earth-like planets. NASA this week unveiled a major discovery of a star system that contains seven planets similar to Earth. What's exciting is that three of them might just be habitable enough to support extraterrestrial life. Using the Spitzer Space Telescope and Earth-based telescopes, NASA scientists have found a star system called TRAPPIST-1, located 40 light-years from Earth. The ultra-compact system contains seven Earth-like planets, with surface temperatures low enough to support water. Three of these planets are believed to be in the habitable zone, close to the system's ultra-cool dwarf star. These planets take 6, 9, and 12 days, respectively, to orbit the dwarf star. Scientists believe their Earth-like planetary compositions may not only support water, but maybe even life. NASA calculations reckon that all the newly discovered planets have a rocky surface, but the space agency says more investigation is needed to determine if any of them contain water. In 2018, NASA will launch the James Webb Space Telescope and will use this for further research into the TRAPPIST-1 system. This telescope can reportedly pinpoint water, methane, oxygen, ozone, and other elements of a planet's atmosphere. The TRAPPIST-1 system is located 235 trillion miles from our solar system, which means if you wanted to catch a flight there, the journey would take about 44 million years. So, still faster than a Spirit Airlines flight. Earth 2.0 Discovered by NASA NASA has announced the discovery of Kepler 452b, the most Earth-like planet that's ever been found. The planet is being named Earth 2.0. Kepler 452b, a planet located 1,400 light years away from Earth, has been announced as the most Earth like planet ever found by NASA. The exoplanet orbits around a G star similar to our Sun in a 385 day year in the constellation Cygnus. Kepler 452b is 5% farther away from its Sun than Earth is to our Sun, but receives the same amount of sunshine as its Sun is 10% larger than ours. Gravity would be about twice as strong on Kepler 452b as it is on Earth. NASA is planning to do a spectroscopic analysis of the exoplanet to gain a better understanding of its atmosphere. Life on Mars? Mars may not have been an arid wasteland after all, at least according to a new study that suggests the red planet may have been far more habitable than previously thought. Martian meteorites contain a specific mineral that has long led scientists to believe the planet had an ancient dry environment. The mineral, called merylite, contains no water or hydrogen, which led to the assumption that its origins were likewise devoid of liquid. But new research now suggests that merylite was originally a hydrogen-containing mineral, and that Mars may have had a more water-rich history. When an asteroid or comet collides with the planet, the force of the collision propels Martian rocks containing Whitlocket out into space. Researchers theorized when these rocks enter Earth's atmosphere as meteors, the shock, pressure, and high temperature sustained during impact dehydrate the mineral, turning it into merylite. They tested the theory by blasting synthetic Whitlocket with a gas-powered gun at speeds of more than 1,600 miles per hour and with huge amounts of pressure. The shock experiments were sustained for only a fraction of a second but already resulted in partial conversion, with 36% of the mineral transformed to merylite. The findings suggest Mars could have had a more abundant water supply. It also hints at the possibility of life on the red planet, as Whitlocket is water-soluble and contains phosphorus, which is an essential element for life. More detailed studies of Martian meteorites may provide more insight, but a Martian rock taken and transported to Earth will likely be needed for confirmation. For now, scientists need to make do with thermal imaging and rock sample analysis from the rovers. Nonprofit group plans permanent Mars colony. The race to Mars has begun. SpaceX chief executive Elon Musk says the company will send people to Mars by 2024 and he will reveal plans for colonization in September. Meanwhile, a nonprofit group also aims to establish permanent Mars colonies, sending the first group of astronauts by 2026. After Earth, Mars is the most habitable planet in our solar system. It has similar natural resources, a temperate climate, and an adaptable gravitational pull on its surface. 
Nonprofit foundation Mars One has developed a plan to colonize Mars. It has already selected six teams of four individuals, and the first team will begin training next year. In 2020, Mars One will launch a communication satellite to the Red Planet. Between 2022 and 2025, a series of rovers will land and assemble livable habitats, which include a life support unit and a communication system. The living unit will house an inflatable living section and an airlock used by astronauts when leaving the sealed habitable settlement. The unit will include materials for the construction of rooms, floors, and electrical outlets, and comes equipped with showers and kitchen areas. Additional units will arrive and be constructed as new teams join the colony. Attached to the living unit is the environmental control and life support system. The system will feed nitrogen and argon gas extracted from Mars's atmosphere into the habitable space as inert gases. Thin film solar photovoltaic panels will be included to generate electricity. The life support system will be equipped with heating units to boil and extract water from ice in the planet's soil. Once the astronauts have landed, it will also be in charge of water purification and removal of carbon dioxide from the living unit atmosphere. The colony's communication system will include two orbiting satellites, one around Mars and one around the Sun. The satellite orbiting Mars will only be interrupted when Mars is positioned between it and Earth. To counter the lapse, the second satellite orbiting the Sun will intercept and relay the transmission, allowing almost 24/7 communication with Earth. The colony will lose transmission only when the Sun is between Mars and Earth, and Mars is between its satellite and Earth simultaneously. Mars One will launch a team of four members every two years, starting in 2026. It will take a year after departing Earth for a team to land on the surface of Mars. The organization hopes to train and send new teams even after the initial six have colonized the planet. TV show gives a glimpse of life on Mars. The first home designed for humans to live in on Mars will be unveiled at an exhibition in the UK on November 10th. The exhibition of the show home ties in with a National Geographic docudrama that imagines colonists from Earth living on the red planet. The house would be constructed with Martian soil. The soil would be microwaved until it forms a brick. The bricks would be used to build the walls of an igloo-shaped dome, which would be around 10 feet thick. Recycled spacecraft parts, including a double airlocked entrance, would be used as the front door. Experts believe the dome would be able to withstand the Martian environment, including extremely low temperatures, micro meteorite impacts, a thin atmosphere, and cosmic radiation. An underground area would contain facilities such as a dining hall and laboratory. The colony would expand module by module until it forms a city, termed Olympus Town. The exhibition at the Royal Observatory Greenwich in London coincides with the launch of the six-part docudrama Mars, which tells the story of an attempt to colonize Mars in the year 2033. Earth-like planet discovered by scientists. Scientists have discovered an Earth-like planet that lies near the edge of its star's habitable zone. NASA's Kepler Space Telescope discovered the planet by measuring the amount of starlight blocked when it passed in front of its star. Scientists used this data to calculate the planet's size and estimates its mass and density. Kepler 186f is 1.1 times the size of Earth and lies at a distance from its star that would allow liquid water to exist on its surface. It is the outermost planet in the Kepler 186 system, which has four known inner planets. Kepler 186f orbits around its M dwarf star once every 130 days. Kepler 186f receives about one third of the heat energy that Earth gets from the Sun. The planet is about 500 light years from Earth in the constellation Cygnus. Although its M dwarf star is cooler than the Sun, as a smaller star, it is more likely to produce more solar flares and potentially harmful radiation. Even though the planet is in the habitable zone of its system, whether it is actually habitable is unclear. This jumbo-sized planet Earth may support alien life. American scientists have discovered a super-sized Earth-like planet in a nearby star system that could support alien life. Exoplanet LHS 1140b orbits a red dwarf star every 25 days at a proximity 10 times closer than Earth to the Sun. This red dwarf star is much dimmer and cooler than our Sun. Meaning the star's habitable zone is closer. 
However, its cosmic radiation could still damage the planet. LHS 1140b is 1.4 times the size of planet Earth, but is almost seven times heavier, indicating that it's likely composed of rock and an iron core. It's because of this density that researchers believe the planet may be robust enough to endure the radiation and still hold water. Scientists will be able to examine the 5 billion year old exoplanet much further after NASA launches the James Webb Telescope in 2018. Project to capture image of Earth-like exoplanet underway. Project Blue, a plan to build a compact space telescope, has been launched. Backed by private investors, the mission aims to capture an image of a potential Earth-like exoplanet orbiting a nearby star system in our galaxy. Project Blue's half-meter-wide telescope will be sent into orbit. Its high-contrast imaging is designed to take pictures of our closest neighboring star system, Alpha Centauri. Alpha Centauri is 4.37 light-years away from our solar system. Scientists estimate there is an 85% probability that Alpha Centauri's sun-like stars have an Earth-like planet somewhere in their habitable zones. If a planet orbiting within the habitable zones is detected with an atmosphere that could allow liquid water to exist on its surface, it may appear as a pale blue dot in the telescope. The telescope is projected to be sent into space in roughly three years, capturing pixelated images similar to this. Any discoveries made will broaden our understanding of how life could exist nearby, offering us a gateway to the universe of possibilities we may work towards. How Elon Musk Hopes to Ferry a Million People to Mars Billionaire Elon Musk has unveiled perhaps his biggest, most ambitious plan yet, colonizing the red planet with one million people. Using the Interplanetary Transport System, or ITS, SpaceX founder Elon Musk hopes to use a spacecraft composed of a 250-foot reusable rocket and 100-passenger spaceship to ferry humans back and forth to Mars. Musk envisions a thousand-strong Mars colonial fleet of these ships departing en masse. The rocket booster segment of the ITS will transport the spaceship to low Earth orbit. Both parts of the ITS would be made up of carbon fiber, while the rocket would be powered by 42 SpaceX Raptor engines. That same rocket would then return to Earth and launch again with a propellant tank. This tank then connects with the spaceship to refuel the vessel. The spaceship would use nine SpaceX Raptor engines as well as solar sails which gather energy from the sun on the 54.6 million kilometer journey to Mars. After transporting the cargo and passengers to Mars, the spaceship would refuel at the colony there and fly back to Earth. The cost of a ticket is currently estimated at 10 billion US dollars, but Musk hopes to get that down to below 200,000 or 0.002% of the current cost. Uh, yeah. Best of luck with that, Mr. Musk. International Space Station dodges space debris. The International Space Station shifted its route to avoid colliding with an incoming piece of space junk, NASA officials said on Monday. The maneuver was performed to steer clear of a large piece of debris among the tens of millions orbiting the Earth. The space station can only sustain collisions with fragments below one centimeter in diameter. To dodge a large fragment broken from a 1979 Russian weather satellite, the space station fired its onboard thrusters, raising its orbit by one kilometer. Mission Control says that the position change would not affect a Kazakhstan launch scheduled for next week. This is how Russia's robot spacecraft delivers supplies to the ISS. This Russian spacecraft may look like your run-of-the-mill satellite, but it actually plays a critical role in delivering supplies to the International Space Station. Russia's Progress spacecraft is loaded onto a Soyuz rocket and launched from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan. After detaching the rocket, the spacecraft flies on an automated two-day route toward the International Space Station. Progress then docks with the ISS, where food and scientific equipment are unloaded. After the robot resupply ship has fulfilled its mission, it will be deorbited and is then expected to sink somewhere in the Pacific Ocean. The spacecraft is said to remain docked with the ISS until December this year.